Hi, Roger Hill, the uh, Velco Weather Hazards Outlook, uh, valid the 10th day of November. This will be valid today through next Sunday, the 16th. Well, little to no concerns for utilities this morning. Uh, this is uh, ending again on the 16th of November with uh, decent project weather days outnumbering precipitation days ahead. And it will be fairly mild, uh, really, right through Wednesday. Then sharply colder air will move in uh, later in the week, and this could produce some minor wet snow potential for travel issues mainly, not so much utility issues. And uh, again, this would be somewhere along about Thursday night into Friday, and again, along about uh, Sunday uh, to end the uh, weekend. Looking uh, this morning at what was a beautiful sunrise uh, here across the region, and uh, some cloudiness uh, going over to uh, the latest conditions right now. There is a snowstorm uh, taking place across a swath of uh, the Dakotas back into Montana. This is a kind of an elongated precipitation area that's been moving across parts of Minnesota where they're expecting as much as uh, 10 inches of snow in some locations. And this will cut across uh, portions of northern Michigan, really the Great Lakes region here, and then shoot up into Canada. We're going to be on its warm side, and this will fall in the, um, as, uh, in the form of rain shower activity actually along about uh, Wednesday. So looking at the latest um, high-resolution modeling, this is where that uh, snow is going to be falling across a good section of the upper Great Lakes. And some of that in the form of a uh, little bit of a light rain shower is just north of our border area. That exits to the north and should not be any precipitation issues the rest of today. So here's the uh, streak of snow across uh, portions of the uh, upper Midwest into the Great Lakes and then continues north and this is really not going to be a problem, but uh, another weather system will then produce some snow. It looks like uh, this is going to be lasting um, into Thursday night, into Friday, and uh, we're not looking at it very much. But notice this gets down all the way down to the coastal southern parts of New England. Uh, something to take note there. And some lake effect uh, sort of get, doesn't get entangled. And so along about Saturday, things quit, and then we get into... Um, another little bit of snow shower activity, but notice this thing it's going down in the deep south across Texas and then it shoots up into uh, parts of the uh, southern portion of New England and uh, a little streak of snow there. That could be quite interesting across uh, southern parts of New England. Models um, really have been pretty shaky past about five to seven days, so wouldn't count on this, but it is something to keep an eye on down the road. I mentioned it will be mild this week, and you can see the milder air kind of working in along that periphery of that storm system. Those uh, darker uh, red colors, uh, this will peak out on, looks like 18Z, that would be about 2 o'clock on Wednesday. And um, that's uh, about as warm as it's going to get this week, and then cooler air does make it into the region. But note the uh, very dark purples here. We're talking about uh, uh, temperatures that are much, much colder. We're talking maybe uh, 30 to 35 degrees below the norm, and that's fairly significant. And uh, that gets into the plains, but never quite reaches Vermont. We're looking at more, much more modified conditions uh, along the eastern seaboard. So a lot of the uh, talk of very cold weather, it looks like that's going to remain way off to the west of us, even going out by day 10. Here's a quick look at precipitation uh, starting today, this afternoon, and you can see that precipitation off to the north of Vermont, and this weather system sliding in across the Great Lakes. It powers up a little bit and intensifies across uh, the uh, Quebec, Ontario area, and then tracks well to the north and brings us a little bit of precipitation, but not very much. This is the secondary uh, shot of uh, Thursday night and into Friday, where we will see some snow. Again, not very organized weather system, kind of a late bloomer, kind of a Miller B type nor'easter that then tracks into the Canadian Maritimes. And that'll be followed by just a weak disturbance. However, I would not count on this as uh, this far out models are a little bit on the shaky. And some of the numbers here, the meteorological output statistics uh, shows you where your warmth is. This is a 2 meter temperature is 12.4 Celsius. But of note, uh, really, the total QPF, the total amount of precipitation that's added up uh, with all the weather systems over the course of the next 10 days, you're not seeing very much. This is only uh, 38 hundredths of an inch, so it's uh, really not going to be that uh, bad of a period here overall, despite the fact we do get colder temperatures in uh, for the late part of the week and into the weekend. And the seven-day accumulated uh, precipitation, uh, you might note that just 25 hundredths of an inch, so somewhere between uh, a quarter and about a half inch of total precipitation in the vicinity of Vermont, 
a drier area across the Ohio River Valley. We have that system that will produce a fair amount of snow across parts of the uh, Great Lakes. One system off the southeast coast and another that will be affecting uh, the Gulf Coastal regions. And a lot of the main action will be uh, much needed rain into northern California. That will be good for them as well as along the Washington, Oregon coast. And here's the maximum temperature anomalies. Again, these are the highs of, of the day as uh, compared to average or normal. And this is valid uh, through Saturday night. You might notice here, well, near normal. The rest of the country is cooling down. We get very cold air coming in from the plains and uh, warmer than normal air actually out west. Now, how that changes, uh, we'll bump it up three days along here. And you can see not a whole lot of change, still warm to the west, but uh, cold air is now shifted all the way across the eastern seaboard as it now it's counting and waiting the, uh, the colder air this weekend. And here's the uh, Iowa State meteor, uh, meteogram generator, and uh, you can see the high temperatures of the day basically knocking on the door 50 degrees during the day this uh, Monday afternoon. And uh, lows don't not as really that especially cold. Uh, we get into uh, temperatures again uh, pushing up around 55, and in some cases, the European models indicating temperatures might even bust 55 and get knock on the door of 60 uh, during the day on Tuesday. And then also another warm day on Wednesday. After that, sharp cold front moves in, and you can see incrementally uh, day and night temperatures get a whole lot colder. Basically highs in the 30s and overnight lows basically in the 20s. And the tropics are pretty dead. Uh, we like that, so no real issues there. Okay, that's it for today. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.